afternoon. My name is Ashley Kwasny, and that was Gary Kwasny that walked out to go get the scissors. Um, and I'm going to teach you a little bit about microgreens and how you can grow them yourself. So let's get started. And if you have questions, you know, just raise your hand or interrupt me. I'm okay with that. Oh, see, that works. We're growing microgreens with mega nutrients. We are a veteran farmer. Are a veteran. So Gary and Ashley, who are we? How do we know about microgreens? Well, we're the owners of Gecko Mountain Farm, located in Summers, Montana. Veteran farmers, both of us. Apartment homesteaders. We live in a small apartment, and it's never too small to be able to grow something at home. We've been married 41 years. We have four grown children and seven grandchildren. You Really? Well, thank you. He's flirting. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about what microgreens are, what microgreens are not, and what plants can be grown as microgreens, what microgreens taste like, why eat microgreens, microgreen uses, how to grow microgreens, and Gary's actually going to demonstrate that for you with a kit today, so you can see him do that. And then um, you can ask questions anytime, though. okay? So just interrupt me if you need to. What are microgreens? Well, they're young vegetable and herb plants um, in the cotyledon stage, if you'll notice up there. That just means their first couple of leaves have come out. Um, once they start getting bigger than that, then we'd probably call them baby plants, but they're microgreens at this stage. They're about one to three inches tall, um, and yes, you could just call them baby plants. <laughs> they're usually harvest seven to 21 days after germination, once the plant's first true leaves have emerged. We expose them to daylight three to four days. Those that grow longer, like 21 days, they're exposed, obviously, to light a little bit longer than that. And they're grown in some kind of soil medium. It's not real important what kind of soil you grow it in because microgreens are getting all their nutrients from the seed at this point. They don't need a whole, you know, like a whole big composting soil. What microgreens are not? <laughs> they are not sprouts, okay? They ha sprouts have a much shorter growing cycle, two to seven days usually you eat them. They're grown in water and in the dark. There is more, more um, possibility or susceptibility for microgreen for sprouts to get bacteria in them because of that. They are in them. So the things you buy, the, mic, the sprouts that you buy in the store, you know that is a problem you have to watch for is, is bacteria growth. All right. So just remember, don't call them sprouts. We will correct you. <laughs> what can be grown as a microgreen? Well, you can grow them from different kinds of seeds, and I'm sure that not, I mean, there are so many different kinds of seeds that are grown as microgreens. I would say that pretty much anything you could turn into a microgreen, you just eat it before it grows. So here are some. The brassicas, you know, like cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, kale, mustard, watercress, radish, arugula, many of those we actually grow at Gecko Mountain Farm. Lettuce, endive, chicory, radicchio, we don't grow any of those at the moment. Dill, carrot, fennel, celery, we don't grow any of those at the moment. Um, garlic, onion, leek, we do do leeks. Amaranth, that's one we're going to try this year. Quinoa, Swiss chard, we do. Beet, we do. Spinach, we don't at the moment. Melon, cucumber, squash, rice, oats, wheat, we do wheatgrass. Corn, barley, as well as legumes like chickpeas, beans, and lentils, we grow snow peas. Um, we have a variety of about 20 that we grow at the moment. At our farm. So you can pretty much grow anything at that stage. And what do they taste <coughs> like? Well, if you've been down to our booth, you know they taste yummy, right? How many of you have tasted them already? Everybody? You haven't tasted them yet? Oh, you have oh, I, I've tried a little bit of, um, oh, what do you call it? Alfalfa? Alfalfa sprouts? sprouts? They call them sprouts, though. Yes, yeah, because they were probably. <laughs> do they have green on them, though? Well, the tops are green. Okay, well, well, you get for your sandwiches, you can buy them at the store. Mm. I don't know. Those are sprouts, so it's sprouts. Yeah, they're sprouts. They're sprouts. Most people <laughs> don't grow alfalfa as a microgreen. Not that it can't be done, but it's more commonly done just as a sprout. Yes, ma'am. 
but it's uh, probably not microgreen. Okay. It's just microgreens are just a step beyond. Okay. Usually alfalfa is grown as a scrub. We do do sunflower, which wasn't mentioned on here. We do sunflower, and no, you cannot use the sunflower seeds that you buy as bird seed because most of those have been treated with pesticide and different things, and so they're not food grade sunflower seeds. So don't do that. Yes, they are cheaper, but don't use those. All right. All right, so they taste yummy, and they vary in taste. You've got some neutral ones like broccoli and kale. I mean, they don't really have a big, huge flavor palette. And you've got some spicy, like the oriental mustard, if anybody tried it at our booth. Slightly sour, even better, depending on the variety. Um, cilantro, do you like cilantro? How many like cilantro? Well, some of you do, and then the rest of you don't. We know that you either do or you don't, and it's so yummy. Um, Sorrel is actually lemony. Uh, garlic, here let's do some of them. Arugula is peppery. Beets are slightly sweet. Radish, sweet and peppery. Leeks, garlicky, oniony. Oriental mustard, the, uh, the hot one. Cilantro, it's considered a citrusy thing. It's got its own little thing going on. Nasturtiums are peppery. And we do grow nuts. These are all ones that we definitely grow. Um, Sorrel is lemony, snow pea, slightly sweet. I call snow peas the, the um, candy of the microgreen worlds. Okay, for sunflower, they're fresh and crunchy. Most of you tried that if you were at the booth. I call those the chips of the microgreen world because you can just eat those, you know. You don't need to put them on anything. They're just fun to eat. Kale, broccoli, basil, Swiss chard. What do we mean when we say it has an earthy flavor? Tastes like, yes. <laughs> right. Tastes like dirt. Tastes like dirt. But it's really good for you, dirt. It's dirt. <laughs> if you blend it in with something else, maybe you won't taste it. Why should you eat microgreens? I'm not going to mention every single one. I don't know if you can even read them, but they are packed with nutrients, so dense with vitamins and minerals and calcium and all your all your phytonutrients. There are so many antis in microgreens. There's anti um, oxidants, antifungal, antibiotic, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, antibacterial, antimicrobial. There are so many health benefits from microgreens. It's well worth adding to your your diet. Um, on our website, we have a, a a sheet that actually I went through all the microgreens. We have a sheet on each microgreen on the website, and you can read about that particular microgreen. But we also we got asked so many questions about, well, what would be good for this, or what would be good for that, which one should I eat, that I finally sat down and took all the information I could find on what's in each of these and um, compiled a list of, say, if you have high blood pressure, there's a list there of what ones would be really good to help you with your high blood pressure. Now, I'm not advocating not taking medicines at all, okay? I'm just saying that these are healthy ways to address health issues um, and they have benefits that would help you overcome or at least alleviate some of your symptoms of whatever it is you have. There's even ones in there for like acne and there was one in there for spider bite. There's one you could use for spider bite. <laughs> it's like whatever. So I've got all those listed by health issue. <coughs> So you could go on online and see which ones are really good to include in your diet from now on, you know, that would begin to help you. Remember, anything you do natural doesn't, it takes longer for it to take effect in your body than it is if you're taking a pill. What would that website be? Gecko Mountain Farm. And if you didn't get, um, Gary's going to come around, and if you didn't get one of our um, brochures, he'll give you one, and it's got that information on the back. Phytonutrients. Most of them are low in fat. I have to say, though, that um, sunflower, which everybody really likes, just so you know, it's not low in fat. <laughs> that's why it tastes so good. No, that's why it tastes so good. It's not it, low fat. Everybody's always eating them, and I was eating them by the, oh, these are so good, we could just eat them, and then I did some checking on them, and they actually have a few calories in them, so just know that that one's, well, it's kind of like the nut, you know, the sunflower, the seed. Um, it's a, it's an oil, so it's, it's got that in there, and, and so it has a few more calories than all the other ones, but most of them, you know, you can eat them 
they would be considered probably no calories. Did you know that cucumbers have no calories? Things, there's certain ones, they're considered no calories because the very few calories that are in it, chewing them up and your body processing them negates that. So there's certain vegetables that you can eat all you want of and it isn't gonna change, you know, it's great if you're trying to lose weight. Okay. Any questions about what's in it? Oh, but, but sunflower, on the positive side, high in fiber and has a lot of protein. Actually, it's one of the highest proteins in the, in the, the um, vegetable kingdom. So if, you're, if you lean towards more being vegetarian, then finding ve um, vegetables or plants that can give you the proteins that you need, because that's usually the thing that vegetarians need to really work hard in making sure they get protein. All right. Why eat them? They have up to 40 times the nutrients as the mature plant. Live versus cut micro microgreens. We sell microgreens live. We're encouraging you to grow them yourself so that you're eating them, you're cutting them and eating them right away versus cut. Because any time you cut a vegetable or a fruit, it starts losing its nutrients by the hour. Studies show that in five hours, most have lost 5%. In a week, they've lost 55%. So think about what you buy in the grocery store. Would it matter whether it's organic or not? Um, if it's been in the store a week, you're not getting everything that your body would need out of that vegetable or fruit. So adding microgreens as a component of your diet would help you get all that back in, especially if you're growing them yourself or you're buying them live. So even microgreens that you buy in the store that are cut are already losing their nutrients. Normally, but unless you they cut them that day and you bought them from them that day, you've already lost some of the nutrients. And what are we lacking in today's food supply? Nutrition. So you've got to find ways to get it back in. Um, nice thing about this is that you can grow them year round. Doesn't require a lot of space, but that's a lot of sunflower. It's got water in it. It's got water in it. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> That's a lot of sunflower. Um, this will probably last Gary and I a couple of weeks. We tend to eat a lot of microgreens. Not so much the sunflower, but um, the other ones. So getting them that can be grown year-round, <clears throat> and you can grow them. Even if you don't have a green thumb like Gary. No? You can do it. How do we use them? Well, we put them on salads and soups. Remember, microgreens you don't want to cook, you just want to um, cut them and throw them on whatever you're eating. It's a garnish, but I have to say, it needs to be a heavy garnish. You know how you, those chefs, they do, they put these little bits of microgreens on things? Oh, come on, that's just wussy. You need to like, throw some on there, you know? Get a bunch of them in there. So, so you can juice them, I'm not a juicer. <laughs> Garnish any main dish. We pretty much do flat batter pizza, cooking, omelets or frittatas, burger, sandwich, tacos, ooh, cilantro and tacos. <laughs> Oatmeal and yogurt. I know that's weird, but I do it. Ice cream, Gary does that one. That's a little strange. Yes. <laughs> that's how he justifies eating his ice cream. It's, it's, it's good for you. Yes, it's good for you. It's ice totally cream good. with protein. He does. He likes to do the sunflower on, on his ice cream. That's kind of like putting a nut on there. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just, I, I go through one of those a week myself. I the sunflower. Know. She buys just, just gets that one just for me because she don't need them. Yeah. See, too many calories. Oh, I have. Just eat them. You just want to get them eaten, okay? Don't let them sit around. So I'm just going to show you some pictures of ways that you can do it. This is, the, the bread up there is is toast with um, avocado and microgreens. So what is the stripe thing? Oh, I don't know. That one wasn't mine. Hot dogs. Oh, that's terrible. Why do you need a hot dog? This is how you make Wait, it better. You, make it you, know, you put microgreens on it. I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's just eggs, I think. Pasta dish. In my soup, I love it in soup. That one's not mine. Gary does this. That's Gary's cooking. And Gary's ice cream. Quite a shot, wow. isn't he? <laughs> His ice cream, yes. 
So there's lots of ways to eat them. I mean, it really, just whatever you like. Do. So how do we grow our microgreens? Gary, you want to come and let's play with it? Oh, first thing to do is read the directions, which I forgot to bring with me. <laughs> They're downstairs. They're downstairs. That's okay. I, I created a, a uh, let, me, let me mention, first of all, that you can grow microgreens in any kind of container that you can think of. Um, these are just really convenient because they have drain holes and then a solid one. And they're a nice size to for for the average home use because this will grow, you know, what most people will use in in, in a, a week. week. And you can grow them in different kinds of soil. You can use regular potting mix that you buy at Walmart, or you can use uh, something like a hemp pads or coca core pads, or what we're going to use today is called coco core this is actually a dehydrated <laughs> coconut husk that's been pulverized and when you add a cup and a half of water to this little puck you get this much dirt and that's what these are growing in here so whatever medium you're using if you're using one of the pads you're just going to soak it with water first if you're using potting soil or coco core Put it in here. If you can't see in one tube, come on over here. We just put the, uh, if I was doing this out of the home kit that has this puck, I would put the puck in one container and pour water in it, let it let it reconstitute so it looks like this, and then I pour it into this one that has the holes in it. So your soil is actually in the tray with holes because obviously the bottom tray is going to hold the water. And I just uh, don't compress it too much, but just just press it down so it's nice and even. I actually have a, a wooden block that I use at home that fits on all of our little five by fives and I just press down on it lightly. This particular stuff, because we just added water to it, is, is already moist. So I don't have to add any more water at this point. But if I was using a potting mix, I might put a little more water in there and make sure that the soil is nice and moist. And I take my seeds. For a container this size, it takes about two teaspoons of seeds. In the kit, each packet is enough to seed the tray one time. Right. No. Right. You just open it up and... But if you're getting your seeds somewhere else. Yeah, so this is why we buy seeds in bulk instead of buying them in the little packages from the garden store because this uh, two tablespoons of seeds is a lot more than you're going to get in one of those two and a half dollar seed packets from the from the nursery. We just uh, after we've got everything all nice and evened out, we're just going to sprinkle them on. We're going to sprinkle them all over the medium. He'll bring it around to you. As, uh, I don't normally do this out of an envelope, but it looks like it's working pretty good. The idea is just to get them as a salt shaker. Salt shaker, or some people use like the parmesan and cheese things that they use. I mean, what do you do when you? I use, I actually have a, um, a little plastic uh, beaker that, that works real well for me. I measure out an ounce of seeds, which does the big tray, and then I just shake them out kind of like this, or tap them like this, get them where I want them to go. So how many seeds do you use to grow those little trays that we got? The little tray that you've got has got the about, five, five. about an uh, eighth of an ounce, because the, the <coughs> eight of those little five by fives in a uh, 10 by 20 tray, and the average 10 by 20 tray takes one ounce of seeds. And since I'm the OCD person in the house, if I'm here when he's doing it, like I am right now, I want you to make sure that it's happening. You want it all the time. Yeah. So did you say that was two like, oh, there's a spoon right there. This is two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. Can you mix? Can you mix? Two teaspoons for this. <clears throat> 
can you mix seeds? Can you mix seeds in one tray? You can. If you, you want a, a mixture or you want to do like half and half, yeah, you can do that. It's not every square uh, down, downstairs, you'll Oops, see sorry. we have the, the tray that the sunflowers are growing in, the big tray. It's half sunflowers and half peas. I just divided it down the middle and just see one side sunflower, one side pea. So what's the size of the tray? This tray is uh, seven by five and a half. Five and a and what kind of seeds? Yeah, with your peas, do you suck them over there? Yes, the peas and the sunflowers, uh, and actually a couple of different ones, but the peas and sunflowers are soaked for uh, for 12 to 24 hours uh, in water, just sitting in water, and then they're drained, and then they're put un under cover so that they're in the dark, and they're sprouted for another 24 hours. So when I when I plant them, they actually have little tails coming out of them, and it just makes them grow a little faster and uh, consistent. But it's not so much that they have problem getting into the soil because they'll they'll go all there. If you look at the uh, the root system on sunflowers, those are a week old. There's, there are some other seeds, uh, like buckwheat and stuff that we just soak for like six hours and we don't actually sprout them. But the majority of the uh, small seeds are not soaked. There, there are seeds like basil, which are gelatinous, which in chia, like once you chia. get them wet, mm -hmm. they turn into, look like pudding. So you obviously don't want to soak those. So, and you can do chia seeds as a microgreen. Yeah. Chia pets. So you can eat your chia pet? Yes. Yeah. Sure. You should have been eating it. Yeah. See? Did you have one of those? Several. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't eat them. I, I, I didn't. No. I didn't, I didn't know good. either. I found that out. Yes, yes. ma'am. How do you eat sunflower sprouts? Or, or sun, sunflower seeds? Do you have to eat them like this? Or do you just eat them? I have a lot of them growing in my garden. I'm, I'm We're going to let you try okay. these. How do you, what do you eat and what? How do you? Um, ice cream. Ice cream. Salad? Yeah, you can put them in. Salad. Anything. They're very popular on salads, yes. And by themselves and with ice cream. Tacos. Tacos. Anything. Yeah. It, it, the thing with sunflowers is. Can they, I cut? Yeah. Sunflowers have a lot of body, so they're crunchy. And they, they add a lot of body to, to anything you put them in, so they're a really good addition. Well, I have I have so many of those growing in my garden. I, I just love them. They grow all, they grow like weeds. Right. And now I know what to do with the sprouts. Okay. Now, when you when you uh, don't eat the seed hole. Yeah. When you want to eat them when they have just the first two leaves. When the third leaf, the first tr what they call the first true leaf, starts to grow, it'll grow between these two. Once that thing starts to come out, these will become bitter. Okay. And and they won't be as as uh, tender. They're always good for you, but yeah, they won't taste quite as good. Okay, so to finish on here, <laughs> after I've spread my seeds out, did everybody get to see the seeds? Yeah. They look pretty thick. They're on there quite a bit because these are densely planted. Then we're just going to uh, spray them real good with water. So that all the seeds are nice and moist. <laughs> I know some of you. We I had more than just that. you sure, come sure. and tell me that. Yeah, yeah, that they so eat them. Okay, and then we take this uh, sunflower container. Did you want? Oh. Which is? I'm sorry. My we took humidity it. dome. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So when you cut it like that, will it grow? Will those grow back now? No. However, no. Some people there do. are there are but some no. down here that didn't grow yeah. up the first time. So if you let it sit for a few more days, it will appear to be growing more, but it won't be the same ones you just cut. So once you cut them, the, the plants die. Correct. Yeah, when there's no leaves, it the, can't grow. The okay. exception to that is uh, things like peas. When, normally, when we uh, sell a pea, they're about six inches tall, and when you cut them off, you actually don't normally get the very bottom leaf, and they will do a second growth.
but as they grow the second time, they tend to be a little, a little tougher and not quite as sweet. But people grow them the second time and feed them to their uh, chickens and stuff like that. Something so the part you can't grow. do until you guys all eat sunflower? Okay, well I can, I can Is explain. cover the tray with a little. Okay, so we're gonna cover the tray with, we, we've got two options. Uh, what I would do is take one of these that doesn't have uh, holes in it and just turn it up on top, upside down. And that would be, uh, make a humidity dome. It keeps it dark. We're gonna put it, leave it in the dark for the first three to four days. It doesn't get any sunlight at all. It gets open once a day and sprayed for moisture. And it keeps the humidity in there. We want that as well. If we were doing sunflowers, I would actually take one of these trays right side up and set right on top of it. And then I have a 16 pound brick that I put on top of that and weight them down. Yeah, but he does that on a big tray, not a little one. Well, I have a half one that I put on a little one, it doesn't yeah. matter. And Just some weight, more. it needs weight. But, but th these, these sunflowers and peas are so strong that when I put, I do a tray of them and put a 16 pound brick on them, after three or four days, they have pushed that brick up. And if I if I try to plant too many trays and stack too many trays at a time, they'll get stuck in my lights. And I can't pry them off my shelf. Things because built they, up as I have to push down on them so they yeah. can pull it up. They, they are really strong. Okay, so we're going to cover this and let it sit for three or four days, water it every day, and then we're going to open it to light. Just when you water it, you spray it. Yeah, these okay. at this point, I'm spraying them every day. Right. Yes. Not watering underneath, just on top. Just on top. Because they still don't have all their roots yet. Right. It hasn't gone down far enough. So then after a, normally the th three or four days, uh, on about the fourth day, uh, generally, it varies a little bit from seed to seed. But then we will open it up, just take the top off, put some water in the tray underneath, and put it under the lights. Or by this, a window. This uh, tray here takes about a cup of water and before it it gets to a point where it will, it will saturate the soil too much. So we're keeping the soil more, uh, moist. We can do this motion a little bit to get some of it in there. But what we're really looking for is when the, when this, the roots start doing this number, they're sitting in the water and actually soaking it up the water. But they also have some air space, so they're getting air also the roots. And uh, they'll be watered every day underneath. The, the average seed is only watered underneath. Sunflowers and peas, I will sometimes spray them as well, because I find that when the sunflowers are kept moist on top, the shells come off easier. And peas tend to dry out as well if they aren't, don't get that extra water from the top. But the problem with watering most of your microgreens from the top is that because they're planted so densely, you end up with mold issues because there's not enough airflow in there. But we have actually have fans on our shelves so that there's airflow constantly going across to all the trays. Yes, ma'am. The one window I have where I could put them is right by the baseboard heater. Would that be a problem? You just have to uh, keep it depends warm. on how how warm you keep your house. Well, I if, don't keep it that warm. But if it's, it actually would probably help the germination process. Um, mm -hmm. The microgreens like to be at about 70 to 75 without any problem at all. Anything warmer than that, you might run into problems and you might run into some mold issues but generally it, it wouldn't be a problem. Matter of fact, a lot of places, uh, people, they don't have enough heat in their, uh, in their room, they'll put these on heat pads, especially during the germination part. Things to watch for in your house. Like he was saying, the temperature needs to be, you know, between 70 and 80. Um, we do, we have a little, uh, device that shows us the temperature and actually the humidity in the room, especially in the winter, it gets dried out, you know, most of our houses, it dries out, that kind of heat dries it out. So I actually just put a cup of water on my, we have a gas 
fireplace. fireplace kind of thing and just set it on top of it so it's always putting a little bit of humidity into the air. I try to keep the humidity in the room at about 25%. And yes, you need some kind of air circulation. We think there's air circulation in our houses, but you can just get a little cheap fan. In fact, the fans that we have, on, we have one on each of our shelves, and they're just little, I'm, literally, they're only this round uh, at Walmart for five bucks, okay. five, five, 10 bucks, I don't want to think of it that much. And Gary zip tied them to the end of each one, so one shelf has it going this, facing that way, and one shelf has it facing this way. And whatever shelf that we have microgreens growing on, we turn that fan on. And it's not blowing down on them, it's blowing across them. It just gives it a little bit of air. If, if you just have a fan in the room, it doesn't matter. Just a little bit of air movement keeps, because again, they're densely grow, they're so densely growing that you need to make sure there's enough air circulation. But you, you'll find that when you're growing just a small number of trays for your personal use, that's yeah. really not a big not issue. Not as big of an issue. Our, we're, we're talking about our racks are seven feet tall and uh, three feet wide. And, you know, we can do on those those big 10 by 20 trays, we can do, what we figure, 60 trays at a time if we want to do. Oh, there's what it looks like. Yeah. So it's a little more concentrated. And so the airflow on the rack is a little more important. If this is just sitting on your windowsill, it's probably going to get enough airflow, no problem at all. And if you don't want to grow your own, we do a subscription service that's year-round. Um, we deliver to each town in the valley. In other words, we have a drop place where we let you know we're going to be there what time. And it's the same time every week. We have two plans. You can get a four-pack weekly or you can get a four-pack bi-weekly, but this is the way you get nice greens all year round to supplement whatever you're getting from the store. Some things that we like to tell people is that Gary and I, since we've been doing greens, have not been sick. And we interact with people all the time. I, in fact, am teaching kids and tutoring kids, so I get coughed on and hacked on all the time. And I have not had a cold, and I'm usually really susceptible to colds. And Gary, as he's gotten older, he, um, he when he gets a cold, it usually ends up being bronchitis. And he hasn't had bronchitis in the last two years at all, which has been so nice. Um, he's got other issues, <laughs> but not bronchitis. Some of them he's also, bad. he's also, he doesn't mind me telling this, he also is on blood pressure and has been on blood pressure medicine for like forever. And I'm always trying to get him off of blood pressure medicine, but his doctor in the valley and I don't see eye to eye on that. She says he's going to do blood pressure medicine until the day he dies. And I keep saying, well, there's got to be a healthy way to get him off of that. And so I don't go with him anymore to the doctor. But she, but she has, um, over the years that we've been here, we've been here 20, she has upped his medicine because they've had a really hard time trying to control his blood pressure. No matter what they do, it would still be high. They got to a level where they were finally getting, she was finally getting it under control. And then we started microgreens, and really, literally, it's the only other thing that we've changed in our in our diet and and whatnot. And this past year, his blood pressure got so low, she had to reduce his blood pressure medicine. Mm -hmm. So, eating healthy does make a difference. I'm not saying that that will happen for you, but I am saying that whatever health issues you have, addressing it with good nutrition yes. is going to make a difference. Although it hasn't done much for my neuropathy yet. No, it hasn't done much for some neuropathy. Do, do you have grow lights in there, or is that just window? Light? We use uh, LED lights. This particular picture... That one is window over there. This one has lights on it. The other two, that picture was taken before the lights were installed. Okay. But what I, what I have is two strips of LEDs running on each shelf. Mm -hmm. And they, I have them set up so I can turn each shelf on or off individually. So depending on how much I have growing. So right now what I'm doing is I have one shelf that I don't ever turn the lights on and I put all my germination on there with all the ones covered up. And then the two that are by the window are the, the ones that I use when they're under lights. Yeah, you can see more light over there because he's got the lights on. But there is a window behind both of them, but that window has a, a, the, the, shade, the blinds are closed and it's got a... What do you call one of those? Blackout shade. Blackout shade behind the blind. Oh, so okay. no, no 
um, light is coming in through that window over there. And that's the window that gets all the afternoon sun. So. How many hours of light are you guys giving? Normally we do about we do, we do, uh, 10, 10 to 12 yeah, hours. 10 to 12 to 14. And then like if we need to, you know, because remember Alaska, think about it. When we need to, and we go, oh my goodness, these are not growing as fast as they should because, you know, things, the temperature changes, things like that, everything makes a difference. We'll leave them on longer. We go, oh my goodness, these aren't going to be ready by Saturday's market. We'll just make them be under light longer, and that usually helps. Yes, sir. Just regular shop lights, or do you use actual grow lights? No, no. They're, they're not grow lights. These are just LED strips. Yeah, because for and years, all they ever had used was shop lights. Yeah, a uh, and a lot of people do no, use right. the shop lights, the fluorescents. They're cheaper. <laughs> <coughs> but the LEDs are cheaper to run. Yeah. They take less less electricity, and they don't produce any heat. Which so is good. Well, there's LED shop lights close. at Walmart. I mean, yeah. at Costco, yeah, that they're super work. cheap, but they're yeah. not grow lights. Right, they, they, they don't need to be growing. These are just these are just bright white 6500K light LEDs. The, you don't need the extra spectrums because microgreens are not growing that long yeah. and they aren't taking nutrients from the soil yet. They, they, all they need is light. That was the one question when I looked it up and I bought a little book they never addressed. Really? Yeah. Whether you yeah. need spectrum Yeah, you do not. Definitely ways. don't. There are some people that use them, but they're definitely not needed. If you were going to grow that. If you're going to grow marijuana, longer. you need it. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, like if you're going to grow them longer and you know, grow bigger plants, then, yeah, sure. you, would, yeah. then you would have to rethink that. But those of you who are going to grow just to, enough for you to eat really don't need any lights. You, you know, this will even sit in your room on a, light your room light or on the window ledge. If you're going to put it on a window ledge that gets sunlight, you remember to turn it once in a while. <laughs> or they'll all be growing like that yeah. <laughs> toward the light. So you just kind of turn it around every day, every day you know, just turn it. <laughs> that way it gets confused. I actually turn my trays on these racks. Yeah, we do. 180 degrees every day. And it, not only because of the lights, just because there's a difference in uh, temperature from the front of the back to the, mm -hmm. to the back of the rack. So it's just it's just a good habit to, to get into rotating. Yeah. So do you think you could do it? Yes. You can do it, it's easy. It's, it's easy. easy. And our kit comes with two sets. So you would end up with two of these. So basically you grow, you start one and you grow, once it comes out into the green, you know, into the light, you could start your other one. And that way, you always have greens. You never run out. Grow one once a week. There's enough. Um, we sell the kit. I hope you signed up to for the drawing. But we sell the kit, and there's enough material in it to grow one of these four weeks. You know, so a month worth. Not for this couple right here, but for yeah, the for, average for bear. <laughs> but you can't buy one. We like having we have what we like having them ready for us. Yes, they they are in our subscription service, so they can tell you how much they like it or not. <coughs> Do you want to say anything? No. I highly it? recommend it, especially to those who have dark houses. Is your house dark? No, oh. but it's full of chihuahuas, so it's, oh. <laughs> it's loud. <laughs> yeah, no, yes. it's just they it's actually just go thing. through a four pack, which is probably almost yeah. almost this much. Every week. A little bit more than that, actually. Is it more than that? Yeah, because this is five and a half by seven, and a four by is two. It's four, five by five, so it's ten. Okay, somewhere around there. They will <coughs> inhale those in a week. Yeah. Yeah. Really? So, what do you do with it after you cut them? Throw it out. We yeah. We have I a compost, compost pile. pile. Compost okay. I composted Chickens, for the Chickens. garden, okay. but I don't. don't yeah, I don't reuse chihuahuas. it for the microgreens, but I. Yeah, because see, that's garden. still okay. good. So but like yeah, there's still a lot of food in there for your chickens. We actually rabbits, have you know, inherited so. a rabbit from who we don't know. We think somebody just either it got out of somebody's home or somebody dropped it off. We get lots of strays like that around our road. People just get rid of things and they just. Right <laughs> Right and so this light. rabbit showed up in the spring, right. and oh, he's black, so I know he's not a wild rabbit. He's a black rabbit, and he just showed up in our yard, and he wasn't really afraid of us. He didn't let us touch him, but he wasn't afraid of us. 
And so he would eat everything in our yard. Good thing I have a container garden up higher. So we were okay. We became pals because, you know, I didn't care if he ate everything down at his level. Um, but now that it's winter and it's really bad, he is letting us feed him. And we take out of the five by fives, the little five by fives we have down there, I'll, we'll just pick the whole thing up because the, the roots all mat together down there. We just pick the whole thing up and I set it underneath the steps, our steps to our apartment. And he goes under there and he eats them all. He, he loves it. Too. Is it all the way down to the medium? No, it's oh, the, the medium. medium. medium, the medium. medium. But of medium course, the medium's the wet, down. and in this weather, it freezes to the yeah. <laughs> There's a little, little square monkey box. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have to clean all the soup as it gets Okay, so I have a question. Um, if one were to buy the kit and enjoy it, then how do we replenish? I have refill kits for the okay. kit on my website. As well. Yes, on the website, you can buy the kit. You can also buy refills for the kit. <clears throat> so we have Pots seeds. And, seeds. and you can choose the Pots seeds that come seeds. in your yes. kit. You don't have to. And if we don't have something you like in our seed selection, you can let us know and we'll see about whether or not we want to grow it. We're actually going to incorporate five more this year into our more for you. Amaranth. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure. What were the I other ones? Just like the color. Borai, Bora. which tastes like cucumber. Um, Trying a couple of different, a different pea, a different radish, and a different mustard, which are supposed to be even bulkier, or mm -hmm. And is there anything else? I'm sure there was, but I don't remember right off the top of my head. So we have about 20 online there. Yes, sir. Frank, is there a couple that you would recommend? That would be, are there some that are easier for, for people that are starting this? Yeah, all the ones that we have downstairs in our booth are great ones for, because they grow good. They you know, they're ready in a week. Um, so things like broccoli, kale, uh, this mustard that we have is kind of hot, but the mustard, the arugula, they're all brassicas, all those brassicas, they grow pretty good. Um, buckwheat, buckwheat grows pretty good. Does everybody know that buckwheat is not a wheat? It's not even a grain, it's a fruit seed. It's related, it's a fruit seed, it's related to sorrel. Huh. Which chart is it? So, so what happens if you grow it to full height? So basically buckwheat well, is gluten free. <laughs> it, it's, it's a very healthy plant and it uh, it's particularly good in smoothies because it's got a very mild flavor. You so can't tell if, you've got, if you're going for a certain flavor, it's it won't good mess for it up. blood pressure. It's one of, the yeah. one of the ones I use. But it's actually the seed makes the wheat. The, the flower okay. is actually ground up seed. And it's gluten free because it's, it's not. It's a triangular shaped seed. If yeah, it's a fruit seed. Okay. It's real hard. I know the husks make good. Buckwheat is also has a lot of protein in it. So it's a really good one to incorporate. That would be the, from the seed, not from the plant itself. Right. But if you, if you saw, saw it at, at the market, that stuff that was like really tall. Look, weed, it gets gets out of hand. It, it just grows fast. It just grows but it's really good. fast. In a week, it'll be a foot tall. Yeah, okay. I like it. Yes, sir. Uh, no, that's what, fine. What about wheatgrass? That was kind of the starter one to get yeah. everything going. We grow wheatgrass, um, but we didn't bring any today because that's that's the one that we grow, the one uh, microgreen that we grow that has to be juiced. Because we're not cows, we don't have enough stomachs to digest it. So if you just ate it, if you just ate it, it would just go right through you. Um, so it has to be juiced. You'd have to get a juicer. But that said, it is hugely good for your body. There's so much stuff in that. In fact, we sell it as pet grass also because it's very good for your pets. We usually have a little square of it that Gary's grown down on the floor for our cat to use to eat whenever she wants. It is very good for cats, dogs, any any animal that likes to eat grass would benefit from some wheat grass. It is a good one. Yes. It's also pretty cheap. You can cheap. go to like Wheat Montana and buy their, their wheat really cheap and it sprouts well. It does. Well. So That's what we use. Yeah. That's the one we use. Yes, it's a very good. Are the seeds that you guys offer organic? Some of them are organic and some of them are not. They're all non-GMO and not 
not modify in any way, but they're not all organic. The, the, the problem <coughs> that I find with the organic seeds is that I personally don't believe they're worth five times more the price for what I'm growing. They, I don't think what? it makes that much difference. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, that's, that's all of the We also, organic, we also don't say that we're organic because it's very expensive to get that certification, but we grow pure, natural. We don't add anything but water, and we don't use Kalispell water. <laughs> so, my understanding with the organic is that it has not been sprayed Correct. with black sick. So, the non-GMO, are those also not sprayed? I don't know that much about that. I'll do I some research and find out for you. That question. Because that would make a difference. Yes. Yes, yes, sir. Do you have a problem with pests or anything? Because you keep a regular cycle of them going. Is it no. short enough to stop a pest cycle? Yes. Yeah, we don't the only problem we ever have is occasionally in the uh, hottest part of the summer, we have a, a little bit of a gnat fruit fly problem. Just like you would have if you left your bananas sitting out on the cupboard all too long. So we, we, we found a few of those, but very minimal. No. It doesn't, it doesn't, the, the cycle's too short for them to... Yeah. yeah. Okay, I was just curious. If you mm -hmm. know. And the way we grow them, no one touches them. So we don't, you don't wash them, right? Do you? And no. you've never been sick. We don't touch them once they start growing. So when we give them to you, you know, you can wash them if you want, but they don't have to be washed. They've not been handled. And a lot of them get spritzed with, um, can I say that? With a food, food grade hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide right at the beginning. A fungicide. They just get spritzed. Um, you dilute it? Hmm? Well, yeah, because the food grade peroxide is, is uh, like 35% and you have to dilute it down to 3% to use it. Otherwise, it burns your skin. Yeah. Really but it's just enough to make sure mold's not but growing. But it keeps the mold off the sun. Food grade specially bought for that purpose? Okay. Yeah. And the purpose it's food grade. Stuff. It doesn't have any stabilizers in it. Okay. it. Well, because sometimes, you know, when you get batches of seeds, you don't know what's gone on with them, even if they are organic, where they've been sitting, how long they've been. So it, it helps eliminate anything that might have been on them when we got them. We only do it at the beginning of the cycle. Right when he plants them, he usually spritz them, and then he spritz with water. Gives them a, you know, you can tell. Sometimes the the um, the peas and the well, it's probably more the sunflower. They foam a lot, but then there's a lot more stuff on their coat, you know, their shell. So, so we clean that. Basically, we clean them. And, and rinse them and then we plant them with so yeah we make sure that there's nothing on them that's gonna hurt you so during the summer in farmers markets we can pick them up more if you want. yes yes right? right yes you need to come and socialize anyway oh, yes yeah. we do <laughs> it would be an extra trip then I mean, really. that's right because you're at the market every week <laughs> yes we are <laughs> Yes, we're going to do that. It's totally going for that. <laughs> Any other questions? I have another question. Do we have to leave town for three or four weeks? What do we do with our subscription? Just so when you, yeah, so yep. when you have to go to town, you just call Gary or email him or whatever, however you've been communicating, just let him know you're going to be gone. He, he keeps a, a list that people come and go, so they on the on the subscription. And, just writes that down and he knows when you'll be yeah, back. You tell him when you're going to be back and he'll make sure you so, get your green when you get back. Uh, it's going to be in the mud season. The mud season? Where are you oh. going? Downtown? Well, we got to get a house in the mud cellar. We're tired of being there. This is where you should be down there, man. It's beautiful today. I know it is pretty today. <laughs> Any other questions? You think you can do this? Yes. Well, we have no decoction. We're done. 
You can come and see us down at our booth if you have more questions. Can you just say what your kit costs? Oh, I, if you want, I will tell you. The kit costs a forty dollars. Again, that includes the seeds, the soil, everything you need to grow, and then you can you can just get refills of seeds and soil if you like the little puffs because you can get it with this. Yeah. You can get it with any of these, whichever one you want. It's on the website. You can choose whether you want soil puffs I mean, or one of these so to try. I do know toxic. that these, they grow Maybe just a little bit slower. Right. So you have to yeah, take that into account. Right. You might have a couple more days before it comes down. But they work. Mm -hmm. Plant them and then you plant them. With, so, yeah. We make sure that there's nothing on them that's going to hurt you. So during the summer in farmers markets, we can pick them up if you want. Yes. yes. Right? right. Yes. You need to come and socialize anyway. Oh, yes, yeah. we do. <laughs> <laughs> it would be an extra trip then. I mean, really. That's right, because you're at the market every week. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, we're going to do that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Totally going for that. <laughs> Any other questions? I have another question. So we have to leave town for three or four weeks. What do we do with our subscription? Do you so when you, yeah, so yep. when you have to go to town, you just call Gary or email him or whatever, however you've been communicating, just let him know you're going to be gone. He, he keeps a, a list of that people come and go, so they on the on the subscription, and he just writes that down, and he knows when you.